Hello, uh, my name is Mateusz Neumann and I'm a software engineer at, at Codilime. Uh, today I'll talk about Git hooks and, uh, and a tool that accompanies it. Uh, since Git is one of, of the most popular and prevalent uh, software we use across uh, the IT industry, uh, we create commits and, and push them to upstream repositories. Uh, we res resolve conflicts on merging them on everyday basis. Uh, but besides its core, core fun functionality, Git provides a useful mechanism which helps to add some automation to our everyday work. Uh, and with this video, I'd like uh, to make a light and short introduction to, to those Git hooks and a very convenient tool that streamlines the process of employing them. Employing them. So the agenda for today uh, is the following. First, I'll talk about the reasons why the topic might be even interesting uh, about possible applications in everyday work. Uh, then I will briefly mention Git hooks, what they come from, what they are, uh, how and where do they work. And then I'll talk about uh, a tool that I've mentioned uh, that connects those various utilities with with Git, hook, with Git, Git hooks, uh, making it also very easy to manage them, especially across different environments, uh, projects, programming languages, etc. Uh, and by utilities, uh, I mean things like uh, formatters, linters, uh, static code analyzers. There is a really big list of, of those uh, utilities that can be used with with uh, with git cooks and finally we will have um, a quick demo right so uh, why should we even care, even care right uh, why is that uh, important so uh, first reason that comes to mind is is that continuous integration is expensive it, it always costs time and most of the time it costs costs money uh, so it seems quite sensible not to overuse it and uh, with that, uh, probably the first idea which comes to mind is, uh, well, fixing the maybe broken uh, CI pipelines. For example, optimizing the order of steps, uh, updating the tools used uh, in those steps, etc. And, uh, well, it, it's most obvious uh, case, probably we just, you know, love to uh, fiddle with, uh, with Groovy and, and other configurations, right? Uh, and if we... Uh, Sometimes, sometimes we don't, right? Uh, or sometimes uh, this uh, do-it-yourself approach might not be even possible. For example, a corporate policy might limit our access to CI configuration. So uh, the the first uh, the, the, the the first idea, well, fixing CI might might not always uh, be possible. Uh, the other uh, the other use of git hooks uh, and and the tools uh, used by that uh, well the, there are just many tools that could improve your code and automatically make your prs look uh, look just great and uh, i mean things like linters and formatters which exist for most programming languages and, and not always not only programming languages stuff like CSS, for example, or, or HTML, right? Uh, more important even point is that those PRs are not only going to look great, but a review process will be much smoother. And uh, using those tools, you'll make a uh, reviewer's job just better. And, and uh, who wouldn't like to make a reviewer happy, right? <laughs> uh, finally, when the tools, uh, when using those tools, you will learn uh, along the way. So you will discover good practices, typical use uh, of data structures, and who knows, you might even one day uh, get a sip from Holy Grail of uh, idiomatic Go, maybe. Uh, and the third reason, uh, well, it's kind of personal for me. <laughs> so some time ago, I uh, pushed my AWS secrets to a Git repository. 
Uh, that's not something I'm particularly proud, proud of, but uh, well, that happened. That happens, I think, not only for me. Uh, and that was the time when the, the, the cup overflowed and I decided to do something to solve the problem automatically. Uh, it occurred to me that Git must have some sort of automation feature to do things at, at certain uh, stages of the workflow. Uh, I thought, what if I could automatically run some some validation, some secrets detection on, on the code that I try to push? Uh, then I thought, uh, well, sometimes uh, Git ac GitHub actions pick up on lack of task ID from Jira, right, in, in the commit message. So what if we could just, uh, well, validate the, the, the PR before actually pushing them to the Git? Uh, I think it's it's not not just me. Uh, I think it might sound familiar uh, as well for, to you. Uh, so uh, with that, I'd like to introduce you to to GitHub Git hooks. Uh, and those are those are uh, custom scripts uh, that get fired off when uh, certain actions occur. They can be useful to identify issues, fixing formatting before a commit is created. Uh, or changes are pushed to upstream repository or, or branches merged. Uh, those are created in the git hooks folder in your repository upon the repository initialization. Uh, those, uh, the, the, those pre initialized uh, files are, of course, samples, so they will not be fired uh, on. On any changes made to the GitHub, uh, uh, sorry, to the, the Git uh, Git repository, uh, just samples to for you to to look at uh, and uh, well use later on. Uh, there are two categories of those uh, hooks. Uh, first one is client side, and and uh, the other is server side hooks. Most of the time we control the former, so I will focus on those. And out of those, there are two subcategories, or maybe even more. Again, I'll be focusing on on, uh, on the hooks that are uh, related to committing workflow. So uh, those will be the ones which are visible, in, like highlighted on the on the right side of the screen. Uh, the, the first one is pre-commit. Uh, next comes uh, prepare commit message, then commit message, and and pre-push. And uh, if you are interested in to, to learn more about the subject, about uh, other well, other hooks, uh, I will point you to the documentation which is linked in this video descriptions uh, below. Uh, what's it, what is important is it's to remember that those client side hooks are not synchronized. So uh, if you made any changes to, to hooks configuration on your copy of repository. It's just your copy of the repository that gets those uh, hooks configured. It, it's not uh, shared across uh, across other copies of uh, Git repository. So it, it's important to remember that. Uh, so Git hooks are a fantastic tool. We use them every day. Uh, we can use them every day. Uh, and by no means is this uh, the exhaustive description, and again, I, I suggest you take a look at Git's documentation linked in this uh, video description below. Uh, so, uh, Git hooks provide a great way to automate certain actions, but they have some limitations, uh, or rather possible enhan enhancement points, <laughs> let's call them. Uh, so the hooks that you write uh, might rely on specific tools to be available on the machine they run. Uh, the tools are written and distributed in ways that are not always entirely convenient. The, the authors of uh, pre-commit, which is the tool I, I would like to talk about, the authors uh, bring up an example of uh, SCSS lint, which is of course a linter for uh, sassy cascading style sheets, which is written in Ruby. So uh, they Point, uh, point out that a front-end developer who, who works with uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, HTML, well, doesn't necessarily need to install Ruby uh, just to run the linter. Uh, so that's the one, uh, one thing they try to address with the tool. 
and also uh, sharing git hooks across projects can be painful so uh, as i've mentioned uh, they are not shared uh, it's just uh, git uh, standard that they, they don't share uh, git hook configuration uh, but for the teams working on a, on a project, it, it would be nice to have the similar uh, tools used across the team. So this idea uh, of building uh, the pre-commit uh, tool came out of discomfort, really. Uh, so the, the nicest features of, of the tool are uh, that it automatically installs, uh, downloads and installs uh, any required tools like the one I've mentioned, right? Ruby project, for example. Uh, it doesn't require root access. Uh, so the tools are just being downloaded to your home directory. They don't pollute uh, any locations man managed by uh, your operating systems package manager. So it's all clean and tidy, uh, which is always nice, uh, also nice. Uh, and there is like uh, 500 tools and counting to, to choose from. Uh, and again, we'll see them in the in the demo. And uh, I would like to point you to to, to, the, to the list of those hooks uh, listed in this video description. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start with demo. Uh, okay, so let's start with creating a, an empty Git repository. And uh, let's clone it to something usable. Okay, and as I'm Python programmer, most of the time we'll use Python. Uh, let's create a, an environment to work on. And let's use this environment. Uh, uh, we need to install this uh, this tool, the pre-commit. So let's use pip for that. Okay, and then uh, let's actually write some code. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, Quick and dirty, uh, quick and dirty. Uh, it, it, it's not uh, Python I would be uh, very proud of, but that's kind of uh, the idea, right? So let's let's use some tools to to pick those uh, the, those problems that I'm creating now. Uh, So the, the first uh, function, you know, greets greets someone, greets a user. Let's call him, uh, and the other will maybe just return a password. And uh, well, let's make it usable like that. And uh, oh, maybe actually, let's do it. Maybe something like that. So let's check if that works. Uh, yeah, kind of works, uh, right? Okay, so uh, with pre commit. Uh, as always, look at the help. So there is this option, option to, uh, to create sample configuration. So let's use it to bootstrap the configuration we are going to use. Sorry, pre-commit 
config yaml this is the name we should use and let's let's modify the file a little bit just like my spaces in in the right place uh, this is going to be python code so uh, we can look at the list of supported uh, of supported hooks uh, let's add black to format our code uh, yep, like that and uh, revision is not going to be important now uh, we'll get back to it later Uh, maybe also flake because well many CI tools pipelines use that uh, so let's add it as well to our configuration again revision is revision, not important uh, and the one uh, that I like very much. It's uh, something to detect our secrets. Uh, again, revision. And actually, let's try to make it run only at the stage of pre-push so not not always uh, just you know to, to to see how it works okay uh, so we have two files uh, let's try to add them okay Okay, as you see, nothing happened. This is because we did not yet install the, the pre-commit uh, hooks or git hooks run by pre-commit. So let's do that. Uh, so we need to install hooks and uh, let's add two types. This first will be pre-commit and the second one, pre-push. I think those will be most useful at the moment. Uh, anything changed now? So we can try to commit. And like that, you see there is, uh, well, first uh, environment was uh, being initialized, but then it failed because, because the revision, right? Uh, fortunately, uh, pre-commit, provides us with uh, the auto-update functionality, so let's fix that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, as you see, the, the revisions changed. And now, yeah, so now we have some problems. The first, uh, well, end of files would, was fixed, then black formatted our code. Uh, so let's see what changed. Yeah, just empty lines, spaces, right? So nothing interesting. Uh, so let's add those and try again. Okay, now it's just the uh, flake 8, which points that OS imp is important but not used. So we'll remove that. Again, add the modifi modified portion of the file and let's try to commit. Okay, so uh, initial commit. Okay, so we have the, the first commit. It was accepted. Uh, so now, uh, how about pushing that? Oh. And here, detect secrets uh, gets fired off because, right? Because we added stages pre-push here, 
uh, definition to, to, to use it in in, uh, in pre-push hook. Uh, okay, so let's fix again the, the code. Well, for now, let's just maybe remove that. Or maybe... Silly one, but... Uh, yeah, something like that. I actually don't know how it work, how it will uh, work, but we'll see. Okay, and just like that, uh, our changes get committed. Nothing complained. As you see, uh, pre-commit. Uh, or actually pre-push was used to detect secrets, didn't find any, things got committed and, and pushed uh, to the repository. All right, uh, so just like that, we went through some examples of practical use of Git hooks. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.